Hi guys, welcome to the first ever episode of my YouTube channel. This series I am going to be documenting my pro debut prep. So I'm an IFBB pro in wellness and this year I'm going to be competing for the first ever time as an IFBB pro. So if you'd like to follow my prep journey, please subscribe to the channel. So today, episode one, I am training lower and delts. And I'm just sitting here with my pre-workout. Um, I have got 35 grams of oats, 35 grams of whey, and 10 grams of dark chocolate. Really exciting. Um, and in a minute, I'm gonna be going upstairs to the treadmill, um, doing five to 10 minutes of just steady walking to warm up. And then I'm gonna take my pre-workout ready to train. Let's go. So I will always do, especially on a leg day, um, like a 10 minute warm up, um, a little bit of an incline walk just to get all of the blood into the muscles so that we're not going downstairs and we don't start lifting with cold muscles. Basically, getting the blood going all around the body, get the heart pumping. So in my pre-workout, I have got Today I've got 10x um, stim pre-workout, so that will give me nice burst of energy, keep me laser focused um, throughout the entire workout. Um, and then in my intra workout, I have got EAAs, I've got creatine, and I've also got glutamine. They're all 10x. Um, so glutamine is good for the gut and the digestion. EAAs they help start that repair process as you start to sort of tear those muscle fibers down and then creatine great for energy great for stamina and endurance so we're starting on the adductor so i'm going to pre-exhaust my little adductors here we're going to start with a couple of warm-up sets just because we're starting the workout nice and fresh um, and then i'll go into um, like a working heavy set and then I'll do a back off set, um, but I'll speak, I'll go through that as I'm doing it. Right, 60. I've done a couple of warm-up sets um, on 60 key. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put another plate on. It's not quite my working set yet. So this is like a feeder set. So what that means is I'm going to do sort of like a six rep just to prime the muscles ready for a heavy set. So I don't want to waste my energy now and use all of my energy into a heavy set that I'm about to do next. Here I go. <laughs> Now we're gonna drop the weight a little bit and go for a back off set. So a back off set is typically like a higher rep range with slightly reduced weight compared to your working set. Uh, and the idea is that you are like hitting an already fatigued muscle. Um, and also, fun fact, science has shown that because it is a lighter weight that mentally you can actually push further than you actually maybe potentially thought you could. So we still train to failure. We just increase the volume and decrease the weight slightly. going to be um, a seated hamstring curl. Um, again, I've just done adductors. Now, looking at that posterior, I want those sweeping hamstrings. I'm gonna do seated hamstring. Again, I'm gonna do one or two feeder sets to just warm up the muscle again, prime myself for a heavy working set. Then I'm gonna do a big working set, and then we're gonna do a back off to do like a lighter load. Again, 
five sets training until failure, keeping constant contraction in the hamstrings, and I might even do a couple of partial reps in there, which means that you don't hit the full range, you just keep your hamstrings within that midsection so that you're keeping that blood in that muscle and fully contracting. With these, I actually like to put my hands on my quads. So you have the belt to like keep your, your glutes and hips into the pad. But when I go a bit heavier, a bit like some of the machines you get, which has got like a nice handle that goes on top. If you push down onto your quads, it keeps your back pressed against the pad. And it means it stops any movement from your glutes and your back. And it keeps that full connection there. Just because the plan says 10, don't, doesn't mean that you have to stick to that. That was a nice 12 reps. That's good. Okay. Now for a back off set. Right, let's go. So, 12 to 15 reps. A couple of partials in there. Let's go. Squeeze. Couple of isolation, easy isolation exercises, done. <sighs> I'm now setting up for a B stance hip thrust. So for me, glutes are always the goal. So I have variation of hip thrust movements. They are the go-to movement for building glutes. So today, the variation I've got is B stance. So that means it's concentrating on each side. So that will help with any imbalances you've got. Um, and personally for me, a B stance, I really feel it fire up my glutes. Oh. Juicy. Yeah, I like them a lot. I feel them a lot. So the key is just keeping that tension the whole time. So on the way down, just trying to think about engaging your glutes, not just on the way up, where I will make sure I get a really nice squeeze and I'll lock out at full extension. So right at the top, I'll make sure I'm squeezing, but the key is also to engage all the way on the way down. Don't lose that engagement. Let's go up weight. Shocker, um, it's gonna be reverse hypers on the Smith machine. So this is a really short range of movement. It's literally just isolating the glutes. It's just a little um, extension. Um, it's very Instagram-y. So I actually wouldn't recommend this for 
building your glutes. Like I would stick to the conventional, like big, heavy compound lifts, like barbell hip thrust. But this is when I'm obviously looking at my pro debut. I'm looking at those finer details. So as much blood going into those glutes as possible. And we use the band so that we don't, um, the bar doesn't lock itself when I'm doing my reps. When you go up and down, it doesn't really lock itself. Look, woohoo! Top tip, the secret life of a wellness girl. So I want my quads off of the bench, just into my hips. Um, I want to turn up my knees, all in the glutes. So that one is all about mind to muscle connection. It's not about going crazy heavy, it's about keeping that constant, constant connection. So I really have to think about it. Whew. Right, we'll go up though. one more in me so currently I'm doing five lots of 40 minutes cardio which is around 400 calories ish um, and I'm currently on just 10 to 11 thousand steps which isn't bad at all I get that done through like daily um, expenditure um, calorie wise I'm on training day I'm about 1900 I think, everyone is very different, so some people might be on a lot more, some people might be on a lot less, myself typically, um, my body is a bit stubborn so I will have to drop to low calories, but that is just how it is, that's how it is, and then I think rest day I'll be on a little bit less, um, I think it's still good, I think it's 1800, but I have been, I, in the past, previous preps, I've definitely gone below 1000, but I probably won't have to this prep. We've got a nice long time, don't have to burn out. Hopefully keep some good amount of food. But most of my carbs are from veggies, keeping yourself nice and full. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up and do my next set. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually quite good, I felt that that time. Right, a little back offset. That's it, I'm done. Connection's lost. Okay, so next exercise, I am going to be doing um, a B stance or single leg RDL. Um, the reason why I do this is because I already have conventional RDLs um, and again, it helps any imbalances. And my RDL will be focusing on my glutes. So I will have like a soft knee, that little bit of like knee flexion to make sure I can hinge right back into my hips. Um, I'm going to be using my lifting straps because I don't want to be worried about my grip going. It's not a forearm strength thing, so I can make sure the weight stay nice and close to my body so that I can allow my hip to hinge all the way back. Um, so I'm thinking about going back rather than down with an RDL. We strap up. Make sure everything's in line. 
I'm thinking about putting my weight into my supporting leg here. This leg is literally just for stability. So core engaged, keeping everything nice and tight. So I'm going back. My knees are not coming forwards. So, I do have conventional RDLs. I actually do both barbell RDLs and conventional dumbbell RDLs with both. However, single RDLs, I find a really good connection. Like, I can really sink into each glute. And obviously, we want to make sure that there's no imbalances. So, typically, my right glute is stronger than my left. So, we want to make sure that we even those out and train each side. Um, it's another way of targeting your glutes and really getting into them. Ooh, I can't breathe though. Okay, so last glute exercise. We are doing the abductor. So I actually use yoga blocks on the abductor because I want to get maximum range of motion. And I find this one, um, because I'm quite short, when my legs come together and they go out, these in the outside of my thighs will give that extra extra stretch and extra contraction. It's really good for short people. do a muscle round so a muscle round is typically so you do six reps and then you would rest for 10 seconds and you repeat that four times so you'll do six reps 10 seconds rest six reps 10 seconds rest six reps 10 second rest six reps 10 second rest so that's totally 24 reps so it's a way of getting higher volume but still keeping a really decent load so you by the like third or fourth set you should be finding that really really tough um, so muscle rounds are really humbling you start six reps and you think oh it's absolutely easy but by the third or fourth round it hurts Last one, ten, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> 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 Because sometimes you just gotta go with it. Woo. A couple of partials there. <sighs> Whew. 
three, four, five, six, exercise is going to be crucifix laterals um, for these delts. They're feeling actually quite pumped from the Smith press. So I'm using cuffs um, and the reason I use cuffs is because I want to make sure that the movement is not coming from my wrist. So when people use um, the handles they are, you see the, the, the wrist breaking so with any lateral movement at all, you want to be leading with the elbow. So away from your elbow, think out and then up. So with crucifix, I like to think of crucifix like um, a bit like Jesus on a cross, hence crucifix. So you're going like out and up, out and up. And I'm not going to come crossing because they're going to lose um, engagement with the shoulders. So as soon as I'm coming up, squeeze, coming back down, not crossing, and then out again. You'll see. <laughs> thumbs to help me when I go out like a bit like you would on dumbbells that you use your pinky I use my thumbs because to make sure that I'm getting that rotation here there Ooh, I'm just giving everyone the thumbs up at the gym <laughs> the aftermath whoops so for my last exercise um, I finished off with a back exercise so I'm doing a single lat pull down um, again I'm using my lifting straps because I don't want my forearm or my grip to be the focus I want to think about driving back with my elbow um, I don't want to be using my bicep to pull back, I want to be driving with my elbow and with a lat pull down I actually think about driving down towards my hip rather than people sort of going up and down like this. Think about driving down and keeping that elbow tucked in and then you'll get a nice lat engagement. workout done 
So I'm just going to finish off with a couple of rounds of posing and then I'm going to go downstairs and get some pose workout in. Cocoa Pops, some quick digesting carbs to replenish those glycogen stores, so going into your muscles, and a juicy 35 grams of protein whey, and I went for cinnamon donut today. So if you are interested in working with me, um, and you have got a specific goal, whether that's competition or if it's a transformation, um, then comment below or if you would like um, to work with me on your posing whether you are a first-time competitor or you are a seasoned athlete then drop a comment and I'll be in touch.